What's up guys? So Gearbear sent me this little bad boy, the T-Bert Tarantula, to give a bit of a review on, figure out what I reckon about it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, we went through and unboxed it, the packaging was sensational. That scores a 10 out of 10, easy. Um, everything was right where it should have been, nothing was broken, nothing was damaged as you can see, everything was absolutely schmick and really well organised, so no complaints there. The instructions on the other hand, uh, even though I was really excited when I actually pulled them out so everything was alphabet and labelled and the bags and screws, everything was so organised and it looked awesome. Um, unfortunately though, didn't really correspond as well to real life. Uh, it seems like there's been quite a few changes. This is the new model, the 2017 model, or so Gearbest says. So I think there was a few issues that maybe I got the older version of the manual, but the new version of the, of the printer. So the board itself, slightly different. That wasn't the biggest issue. There was a few mounting things as far as where the mount of the, the rear motor goes and everything like that. I actually used the Arca Ed instructional video, which tops job, man. It was really good videos. Um, but along the way, there was a few differences between what he went through and what I went through. If anybody else is having big issues, let me know and I'll do a separate video specifically on the differences between my manual, my build and what he goes through. The assembly, everything kind of went together the way it should have done if I'd known what I was doing, but everything did go together, go together nicely and it does feel nice and sturdy and stable now. Nonetheless, haven't had any real issues since I got it built. Uh, slight gimmicks with the clicking Bowen motor there, which turned out to be mostly a leveling, leveling issue. It does still happen from time to time, which I'm still nattling exactly what that problem is. But look, we'll get there. That's part of the fun with 3D printing. Uh, build quality of this is sensational going on that. Everything really feels nice. Love the touch of the, the labeled tarantula bed. That's really, really cool. Uh, I think you could print, you are probably supposed to print directly onto the tap surface, but uh, I prefer, I just cut some glass and chuck some glass on there. Check out my glass cutting video if you're interested in getting some free or cheap glass for your printer yourself. Now the features on this guy, being a new board, there are some pretty cool features on there. The pause option uh, works flawlessly, I've tested that a few times already. I really like the wheel bearings on it, it's really, really quiet to print, um, especially compared to your linears like on your Anad A8, but again, that's a different video again when we'll do a bit of a, a comparison. The PSU and PCB fans, they're really, really cool. Um, not mounted at the moment because I am going to mount a couple more fans, one being a part cooling fan, uh, and so the board's still open. But once I've got them, all, got them all done, that'll be closed up. Now the acrylic bed frame, I'm not too sure about. So this is uh, an aluminium H plate, which once you level your bed, it's very, very, uh, very rigid. This has quite a lot of give in it, so Look, I'll do a little more painting and I'll decide if I like that or not. I'm sure it's there for a reason, so we'll just figure that out as we go. Now, onto pros and cons. Look, let's start bad and finish good, right? Uh, the instructions obviously have been there. That was a bit of a joke. Um, even, even when it was correct in what I was doing, even making sense of the, of the little diagrams was a bit annoying. So, instructions, they're in the right direction. I like the organisation side of it, but actually in practice, need some love there, guys. Need some real work. The external PSU, look, it's getting more and more common. The Anit, this is mounted on, on board. The newer models, I'm, I'm noticing more and more of even the Anit are coming externally. Not really too sure what that's about. All I do know is that it makes transporting a lot trickier. So even moving it from where it was to this workbench, everything had to be stacked on the build plate, with the screen and the, the PSU and everything. Not a big fan of that. So again, maybe it's there for a reason. Maybe they're doing it for a reason, but I'm not a big fan of it. I know I've seen guys mounting the screen on board, so I might get around to doing that once everything's cleaned up but having the PSU just sort of floating around, not too sure what that's all about. And no part fan. TiVo, what are you doing? What are you releasing? This is apparently a new model. We are releasing several models of the same print with no part cooling fan. Just, I don't get that. So add a few bucks to the kit and, and, and fix that up. Now the pros, very fun to assemble, as I say. Uh, I love this knob instead of the clicky tacky buttons. The knob's a big, a big plus. Uh, it printed on the second attempt. That's my first attempt at a, at a cube. Fail. Second attempt, print. So, no complaints there. Look, let's finish it up there. Didn't want this to be too long. But the question is, can it print and can it print big? The answer is yes. With no part cooling fan, even to date, this was printed on it. That's it. Little, little box for the Mavic there. But, look, crudely put together. A few of the bits did snap off, but it did print. And we got there and it works and it's functional and it happened overnight. So guys, we'll leave it there. Please subscribe if you want to see more reviews and videos on 3D printing, drones, photography, etc. Uh, click like if you like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Ciao.
It's been two months since my fateful, beautiful little tarantula arrived, and I think I'm finally about ready to make my final decisions here. I was rambling on and on and on for a lot of the first part of this video, but again, I've printed a lot of things, everything you see here, plus a heap more that's been given away, and I think it's time. So, as far as print quality goes, once you work through the tweaks and, and, and the gimmicks of everything, you can get some really, really beautiful prints out of this, which is absolutely awesome. These are vase mode, printed in PETG, which it has absolutely no problems with. In fact, on that note, everything here has been printed with the Tarantula 100% stock. Contrary to what a lot of the other guys do, which is go out and immediately start modding and specking up the printer, I decided to keep it stock, stock, stock. So everything you see here is what you can achieve with the Tarantula straight out of the box. With some tuning, of course, but straight out of the box. Nothing added, no extra bits and bobs, no, no fans, no nothing. So this is it, perfect condition. <laughs> Pretty much everything here is PLA. Uh, I'm testing some PETG by Sunlu at the moment, which is absolutely gorgeous filament. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful condition prints. Uh, very easy to print as well. I'm printing that basically below ABS temp. So anybody who's saying, can I print PETG on the Tarantula? The answer is a resounding yes. The Sunlu I've got running on 85 degree bed and uh, 210 degrees. 215 degrees on the nozzle there, and it prints beautifully, gorgeously. There's definitely a little bit of the top section, small details where, hey, if there was a part cooling fan, we'd probably be looking a little nicer. But all in all, I could probably slow that down further and come up with some even nicer results there. Nonetheless, very happy with how everything's turned out that we've already seen printed in two parts. This is probably one of my absolute favorite designs and prints in the world. I'm gonna do a video just on this because I've fallen in love with it. It's the Moon City. I will provide links in the in the description below and this guy I've just put some uh, little miniature LEDs in there absolutely love that print you're a good old fa faithful Benchy of course which we've used to work out some gimmicks and issues with the with the print quality I've done the Rook a few times now our little helix continuously fails but the rest of it looks really really nice this absolutely blew me away this is really cool it's a little tube with a working thread. The thread straight off the print bed. I kind of worked it in and out once or twice, but the thread itself is sensational. Now again, that blew me away. Print quality finish is just sensational. Can't complain. That's our K-Camel clear PLA there. Uh, pretty much everything else is Sunlu, Sunlu pink, K-Camel, these ones are PTG, that's PTG. I love the, the, the icy crystalline finish of the uh, of PTG. Now, back to, back to what we're here to talk about. Now, our clicking extruder is all fixed up. That was purely bed leveling. The click is actually a good indication of when something's wrong. So you've either got a bit of a clog in the nozzle or maybe there's a little bit too much friction going on in your tube. Maybe the temperature's not high enough. I definitely don't recommend going in and, and changing the voltage of your stepper motor. I think that's definitely the last thing you want to be doing. You can definitely resolve a lot of your issues just by making sure everything, your PTFE tubes, or, or sorry, your Bowden tubes in the way it should be. Make sure your nozzle's nice and clean. Make sure you're at the right temps. You should be pretty good. And leveling, of course. Make sure you're leveled nicely. Now, I've got all fans and everything finished up on the printer. I've still got some cable management to, uh, to finalise. If you guys have any great suggestions on that, let me know. It is absolutely my weak point, my, the absolute bane of my life. Uh, so let me know if you've got any suggestions there. But uh, the fans are on and they're working perfectly. I haven't had any overheating issues. I haven't seen any sign of, of connectors warming or, or, or the, the motherboard warming up or anything like that. So that's a big plus. One thing I will say, however, is the motherboard fan does tend to provide a little bit of, I call it blow off. I don't know what it's actually called, but just a little bit of extra, extra air that blows onto the print in certain parts and can cause certain issues. I'm, I'm gonna print just a little basic slip cover that's just gonna kind of sandwich in between the two pieces of acrylic just to block the side of the print bed. We'll get there. Not the end of the world. Smaller detailed parts, I just tend to throw towards the front left corner of the print bed. Bigger parts doesn't seem to affect as much. Now the big question is, of course, should we buy it? Who is this printer for? Look, to be honest, I think the printer's for a lot of people. It's definitely not for the people chasing the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest bang for buck. I think there are other kit printers out there that you can probably spend equal, similar amounts of time and end out with a with pretty similar sort of sort of results. So a good example would be the Anaday 8. It's one of my favorite printers, my first printer. Uh, look, out of the box, you do need to 
tinker, you do need to play around with it to get it right. But if you're a tinkerer and if that's what you're in for, I would go for a cheaper kit. The tarantula is probably there for somebody who's looking for something uh, a little bit more intentional design, uh, certainly more effort I think in overall finish. It definitely looks nicer, it definitely feels like a more finished product uh, and probably out of the box it probably comes closer to being a finished product. You still probably want to add a cooling fan, a part cooling fan later on down the track but all in all it seems like a much more finished finished product it seems like a safer product i haven't had any uh, blowouts or connectors or wires warming up or anything like that it hasn't shown me any signs of i want to burn your house down which the anna certainly did in certain things certain stages that did need repairs to get it to where it needed to be so i think who is this for i think if you've got a few hundred bucks you want a starting point printer but you don't want the absolute baseline you don't want to be stressing about adding things for safety reasons I think it's a great starting point really really fun to build pay attention to sort of more recent build videos and again if anyone's having issues let me know and I'll do a bit of a build video uh, but other than the instruction lack thereof the build is a really fun build you end up with an awesome looking printer that you can proudly show your friends it's nice and quiet and it does everything you need it to do one thing I haven't tested is ABS but that's purely I'm kind of over ABS I'm not a fan of it having printed PETG it's got awesome flex great strength and in my opinion much easier to print with zero zero warping that's sort of visible to the naked eye. I'm sure there is some but it's definitely not like ABS so I think we'll leave it there guys any further questions let me know in the meantime thanks for sticking through this long and we'll see you on the next one ciao ciao